Lucasfilm is dying. It's been going on for a while now, but we've reached the point of no return. Somebody needs to go. The studio cannot continue on as is. The sequel trilogy is a systematic failure. Every single Disney Plus show is lackluster and a disappointment. Willow has been canceled after a single season. The Mandalorian has cut its audience in half with the debut of season three, likely cutting that audience in half again down to a quarter after the terrible third episode we just endured. Everybody is now sick and tired of this Lucasfilm. We are tired of the stories that are plotless, thoughtless, godless, truthless, toothless, mangled messes of a heroless story. They took the cult classic Willow and turned it into just a cult. With every single Star Wars endeavor, they changed the hero's journey into a pitiful path featuring nothing heroic, where not a single meaningful thing happens to a protagonist along the way. The only thing being subverted at this point is good storytelling and success. Lucasfilm, we have a problem. Disney, it's time to put the adults back in the room. You know, we need to do things a little bit differently today. For this video, I'm going to go on just a little bit of a rant, but it's going to be worthwhile. None of that yelling or screaming or, you know, that other stuff that you might find out there on the web. But Star Wars and Lucasfilm and all the properties associated with it, they were worth something. They were entertainment that generations of people cared about, that they enjoyed. The heroes inside those stories, whether it be Star Wars or Indiana Jones or even Willow, those heroes were guiding lights to so many people. Little kids looked up to Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, Princess Leia, Obi-Wan Kenobi, so many more. And the people at Lucasfilm, at modern day Lucasfilm, have just ruined it. I mean, just ruined it. This third episode of The Mandalorian is really bad. Really bad. And we're going to go over what it means. And we've got some insights on this that you're just not going to believe. We're going to debut that Saturday morning. Explain what this third episode was about. Where it's leading. And why it really is the death of The Mandalorian. And, and probably Star Wars is a major franchise. I'm not. I'm not trying to be hyperbolic or... Uh, you know, extreme in what I'm saying, we're past this this time where it's time to say Star Wars is done. And that's sad, but it's true. Before we get into my explanation for all this, Lauren Connor was so kind to stay up and watch The Mandalorian Episode 3 at 3 in the morning, record a review, and, and then go finally to bed. And I'd like for you all to hear why he thinks that the third episode of The Mandalorian will actually cut the audience in half yet again, down to a quarter of its side. Lorne, take it away. Good morning, folks. I'm here to give you my thoughts on uh, episode three of season three of The Mandalorian. This episode was titled The Convert. Uh, the episode picks up right after the end of episode two. Uh, we join... Bo-Katan and Din Djarin still underneath the mines of Mandalore. Um, we have a little bit of time for Bo to think about what she has seen before Din wakes up. Um, they don't have any kind of uh, issues getting out of the caves. They are planning to uh, head back to Calavera when they encounter an Imperial patrol. Uh, has a fantastic uh, dogfight scene in the very beginning of the episode. Um, there is uh, an incident that occurs at, at Bo's castle that requires them to continue on. And from there, we cut to Coruscant and Dr. Pershing. Um, the bulk of the episode centers on Pershing, uh, in a way, I think this is going to be a mistake on a couple of different levels, mainly because one, if you remember in the episodes of the book of Boba Fett, where you have, uh, two episodes that center on the Mandalorian and there's 
practically no Boba Fett, it's similar to this episode of The Mandalorian. We now have an episode of The Mandalorian that is nearly Mandalorian-less. Um, that aside, uh, I think the production values of the episode uh, look great. I mean, you can see all of the money on the screen. Something that I want to call out that I have not mentioned in previous thoughts is the score this year for The Mandalorian. It's uh, scored by Joseph Shirley, taking over for uh, 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 Goranson, and I think that he's doing a great job with the music. Uh, the money is all seen on the screen. There's going to be some familiar locations that you're going to see uh, that'll maybe bring a smile to a lot of people's faces. But now I need to get into the negatives for the episode, and I think they're going to be significant for a lot of people. Um, one thing that I want to mention is that uh, as a message uh, or uh, something that I felt some personal gratification for was a theory that I have had and related to something that I've been working on was actually confirmed in this episode, which made me feel personally pretty good. I, I don't want to get into that because that's still something I'm working on that I hope will be coming out uh, in the future. But I think this is going to be the episode where the remaining faithful watchers of uh, The Mandalorian, who are the diehard fans, this is where you're going to lose, I think, another half of the audience. I may be wrong about that, but um, I, I think there's there's no way to, to talk about this other than just ripping the Band-Aid off. This episode practically confirms that they are absolutely going to link up with the sequel trilogy, uh, at least in part. There are still ways that you can dodge that, but I, I think they're doing it explicitly and for a reason. Uh, I also think that's going to tie into their future plans. Now, obviously, the audience of The Mandalorian is not entirely made up of diehard fans. In fact, I, I suspect we're a small fraction. Uh, most viewers are going to be casuals. That's just uh, a numbers game. And for them, that's probably not going to matter here. On the other hand, because the focus of this episode was not The Mandalorian, I think a lot of people have lost patience for world building. They're looking for forward momentum. And I think you're three episodes into an eight episode season. We're still kind of just building to what's going to come next. Um, my suspicion is that uh, unless things pick up significantly for the remainder of the season and word of mouth is good, that um, I, prior to this, I had been predicting that that maybe if they continued along a particular trajectory, that when the season is over, you might see a bounce because there's a lot of people that don't want to wait week to week to see what happens in the next episode. Uh, they'll wait until the season is over, subscribe, binge, and then cancel. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to be the case after this episode. Um, open to being proven wrong there. Uh, but I, I think there's going to be a lot of people that despite seeing the production value, seeing some familiar places, seeing what I honestly think for the episode is good writing, um, this is probably going to be the unforgivable line that, that uh, you can't cross and, and continue to retain goodwill. Um, I guess that's probably going to be all of my thoughts for tonight. It's very late and I have to be to work early in the morning. So I'm going to take some more time to chew on this, see how I feel about it. I am interested to hear from those of you who have continued to watch up to this point. What did you think of this episode? Um, I think there's, there's going to be some, um, probably some heavy conversations in the next few days. So anyway, uh, look forward to hearing your thoughts and we'll talk to you all again real soon. You know, Lorne makes a lot of great points there. We're going to be talking about this more uh, on Saturday morning when we discuss what all of it means, why they spent this time. And I think you're going to be amazed. I, I don't know in a good way, but I do think it's worth checking out because you want to know what they're planning. Otherwise, we can't say, no, don't do that. And maybe we're at the point now where they'll listen. I don't know. Let's take a look, though, at just where Lucasfilm is. Willow canceled after a single season. This from that park place straight out of the newsroom. It did not take long for Willow to say goodbye. Lucasfilm's attempt at non-Star Wars content was a total bust. Now many worry for Indiana Jones and even Star Wars itself. 
The long-awaited Willow never made the Nielsen Top 10 charts of any category a single time. Heralded by some websites as being a great step forward for diverse storytelling, the Disney Plus show ultimately flopped to the point not even a rece- or not even receiving a second season. There's no joy in seeing something fail so badly. Only a hope that lessons might be learned. So far with Disney, that isn't evident. Here's the quote from Deadline. There will be no second season of Willow, Disney Plus's live-action original series based on the 1988 fantasy film directed by Ron Howard. The news comes two months after the eight-episode first season of the show, which served as a sequel to the classic movie, ended its run on the streaming platform. Willow, which picked up years after the events of the film, did not have the zeitgeist cultural impact of the original, but was well-received by critics, getting an 83% on Rotten Tomatoes. While the series won't continue, Willow remains an important IP in the Lucasfilm library, so it might be revisited in the, f- in the future. And then that park place takes up uh, again and says, Frankly, it's really hard to imagine Willow returning at any point in the near future. It was dormant for decades and is likely to be dormant once more. It didn't have to be this way, but dogmatic devotion to culturally divisive narratives and tropes seems to be a real problem for Disney and its studios. So, that's it for Willow. But what about Star Wars? I want to explain why the same exact issues that we're seeing with Willow and we've seen with so many Star Wars series is decimating, decimating that franchise. And I have never seen a company, company nor a studio hang on to something that has clearly failed. Clearly, this, this entire company is a tailspin. Let's take a look now at what this is all about. I, I think this crystallizes it. This out of IGN by Jesse Sheedon. Elia Kane and Dr. Pershing's story in The Mandalorian reveals the, few, or reveals the failure of the New Republic. The Mandalorian is revisiting a key theme from The Last Jedi, and it's awful. And you guys remember, we did a video maybe a week ago about how uh, Dave Filoni says that he still talks with Ryan Johnson often, that he you know, looks up to him, that he gave him opportunities, that he taught him how to be uh, behind the camera. All that just says we're headed for trouble. Let me explain all this. First, first, just we'll read a couple paragraphs, and I'm going to explain. The Mandalorian's third season veers in an unexpected direction. Yeah, an unwanted direction for sure. That was the worst episode I have ever seen of The Mandalorian. And in my opinion, it's worse than anything in in Boba Fett. By the way, it's written by uh, someone who also wrote parts of Boba Fett. And I don't want to uh, call that out too much because uh, when a writer is young and their stuff is poorly received, I can only imagine how devastating that must be. And we don't gloat in that. While we learn what's next for Din... Jaren and Bo-Katan, which, by the way, poor Bo, <laughs> you know, sitting on that concrete recliner with nothing to do, just sitting there moping until the whole building's destroyed. Yeesh. The majority of episode three instead shifts the focus to Coruscant and a familiar villain from seasons past. This episode not only gives us our clearest view yet of what life is like after the fall of the Empire, it also highlights the many mistakes that eventually lead to the Rep- Republic's downfall in the sequel trilogy. Here's the problem, folks. I mean, yes, the latest episode of The Mandalorian is incredibly boring. And it falls right in line line with Willow, which was so bad it's canceled after a single season. Follows in line of other Star Wars shows, which have been incredibly underwhelming, like uh, The Book of Boba Fett, Andor, and even Obi-Wan Kenobi. But the problem is this. The failure of the New Republic. That's what this all comes down to. You see, modern day Lucasfilm has decided that the sequel trilogy is sacrosanct and we're never going to get rid of it. We've got to keep it. Ray and Palpatine, Snoke, all of it. It has to stay. The problem with that is that it steals the victory from the original Star Wars characters. Luke is a loser. He defeats Darth Vader and Palpatine, but Palpatine comes back. The New Republic, that seems to be the giant win and that final, what I consider to be the final real Star Wars movie, it's all just a facade. It's all fake. It's all gone before you even know it. Luke himself becomes a nephew-killing hermit of a man. Han becomes a deadbeat dad. Princess Leia becomes a failed mother, a failed princess, and a failed general who dies before seeing victory. And Palpatine's own heir becomes the owner of the Skywalker name. That's why this entire thing about 
The New Republic is so devastating to Star Wars and why the sequel trilogy will always poison it. Because it takes away the win. It takes away the victors, the victories. It takes away the heroes that we once believed in in the original Star Wars. All those decades of people playing with those toys, with people reliving those stories, stolen from them, and their heroes turned into failures. It isn't that the New Republic is a failure. It's that the characters who supposedly made that are failures, and therefore their efforts are failures. And all those fans who identified with those heroes and identified with their struggles and their adventures, and then went on adventures of their own be because, in part, they watched that and wanted to emulate those heroes. They're failures. That's the mindset of Lucasfilm because they have abandoned the hero's journey. And they've abandoned good storytelling in favor of ultimate cynicism, truly. And that's why we will never, until this is stopped, have Star Wars rise again as a significant franchise because this is unfulfilling, it's unsatisfying and it will always be unsuccessful because cynicism is not a source for grandiose adventures. It's not a source for people to latch onto and hold on to. It's not a vision. It's just a never ending ride through muck. And that is truly what the current modern Lucasfilm has become. Constant cynicism after cynicism, postmodernism, the loss of heroes, the never-ending system of just meh. That's it. And so that's what we're stuck with. So there's no explaining this away. Dave Filoni can't come in and be the fixer this time and fix the sequel trilogy and do all these little uh, maneuvers to make it palatable to fans. It's never going to happen. And Lucasfilm should learn that. Disney should learn that. And they should course correct quickly. Because we are simply headed now towards watching this franchise and this studio die. And this has been coming for a long time. And no matter what the people who want to see this kind of stuff, no matter what they want, it's not going to change the reality. The market has spoken. Star Wars has lost its evergreen status. Willow is canceled. Indiana Jones is on its last legs. It may not even be a success. Nobody cares about Baby Yoda and the Mandalorian compared to what was going on just two years ago. They gave us some hope when they brought Luke back and people thought, well, maybe they'll fix it. They're not fixing it. And until they do so, it's time to tune out. If you like content like this, even when it is a little bit, well, drab, click the like button, share, subscribe, click that notification bell. And, folks, drop a comment down below. We care about what you think. There is a future with good fiction out there. There's a future with great heroes and fantastic adventures and stories once more. But we must demand it. We must tell today's storytellers that we want something to believe in once more. We want beautiful, amazing things and successes and victories. And we want our heroes to succeed. That's the story. That's the story we want to watch over and over again because it reminds us that we can succeed just the same. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, keep learning, keep growing, and keep having fun.